We play. We fight. We conquer. Welcome to the Freak Show. I am your host, Bumpy McSquiggums. Today, I get to do something I've been waiting for for several months, if not a year or more at this point. I get to hop in, I get to play and check out and share and showcase and all the stuff that I do. Fade Tactics, The Girl Who Destroyed the World. It is by Endless Fluff Games and Humble Games, and it releases on July 31st, 2020. A big shout out to Humble Games and Endless Fluff Games, actually. They both, uh, I've dealt with both of them. And uh, yeah, they sent me a code in, well, really, really short notice. So big shout out to you guys. Thank you for sending this my way and allowing me to showcase this to all of you. That being said, let's just hop in and get after it. I'm going to be using a PlayStation 4 controller. I've not actually played this at all yet. It's going to be my very first uh, hands-on experience, first look, first impressions of the game as we go. So it's all going to be genuine, completely blind at this point. I literally just installed it and here we are about to play. All right, so what are we doing? Under which stars were you born? Well, I was born under the April star of the 13th. I have accepted this, and I have moved on. Lore 11. Hundreds of years ago, elemental gates were constructed to seal away all magical things in a timeless world. The elemental gates were opened by an evil witch, causing the two worlds to merge. Looks like there's more lore to be had. There's a tip. There's some more lore. Oh, look at all that stuff. That's so cool. All right. Now we're going to continue. And our adventure begins. You guys know I love tactical turn-based strategy games. Long ago, the world of magic was separated from the natural world by magical elemental gates. Thank you so much, developer, for not having this on an auto cycle where I have to scramble to read through it and it has a prompt to tell me to press a button to do stuff. This is how it should always be. Developers of other games, take note. This this is how you do this. Ugh, I hate stuff that auto cycles. It's fine. All right. The gates remained sealed for centuries and were eventually forgotten. One day, the seal on the gates was broken, and the two worlds began to merge. The natural world was flooded with magical fey creatures, once thought to be myths. The merging was imperfect. Much, to, much of the land was torn apart. The devastation claimed the lives of most of the population of natural and fey creatures alike. Those that survived have forged new lives in the ruins of the old worlds. But growing tension between man and faith threatened to finish what began with the opening of the gates. Our story begins with a young girl named Peony traveling with her two companions, a human girl with the unnatural ability to use magic. I've been hyped about this forever, guys. I like it seriously. I am so incredibly stoked. I'm, I'm, I'm literally bouncing in my chair, or was, once I, I managed to get my hands on this. So, again, you guys know the heart and the soul here at The Freak Show is based upon and grounded in tactical turn-based strategy games, the likes of Shining Force, uh, Final, sorry, Final Fantasy Tactics, Fire Emblem. I don't know why I drew a, br a blank there, but I did. So, the fact that this has come out, this is a new take on that old school formula and it has the the lovely like sprite gra like uh, ugh, i'm excited i can't wait let's let's just get into it all right you two lazy bones it's time to wake up mm. i don't know what that means you got a bird don't give me that you've had more than enough sleep i have a good feeling about today me too mama's out there somewhere and we're gonna find her I have to find her. Come on, we've got a lot of ground to cover before we reach a rock fall. Some, some difficult words to throw together for me, I guess. Ooh, we get to see what Lore 1 has to offer this time around. Humans with magical abilities are infrequent occurrence. Are an infrequent occurrence? Sure. They are usually the result of crossbreeding between humans and fae, but other magical manifestations in humans have been documented. That's fair. The Dusty River. Why is my bike spark sparkling? Gah. It's toast. Oh, is that what toast looks like in this world? Sweet. Slap some butter on it, because it's toast. So much for that good feeling I had today. Ah, I won't be able to fix this without some new parts. 
Map says Rockfall Valley is not far from here. Murph! Meow! Yeah, we're out in the middle of Gremlin territory. We'll have to keep our guard up. Arf arf. Pew pew! Yeah, 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 I get the idea. Barkety barkety chirp chirp. Ooh, tip two. Back attacks increase the attack's damage and cannot be evaded or trigger reactions. Good to know. That is a good tip. That is a very, very good tip, in fact. Ooh, wow, tip six has a tremendous amount of information. Alright, well we're gonna we're gonna kinda wing it. I mean, I, I am rather experienced in tactical turn based strategy games after all. So victory, defeat all or done get got. Alright, all over it. That was that was a really cool battle screen, by the way. Tip move unit. Each unit can take action once per round. You can take you can check the turn order of all units on the field in the lower section of the screen. All right, makes sense. Uh, okay, so first up is Doggo, and after that it looks like it's gonna be three bad guys turn, and then our gal, and then our bird. All right. Are these the gremlins? Is that is that who, who these are? Oh no. Is it, hmm, I'm wondering if the cursor is correct. All right, sorry about that, folks. I went and looked to see if there was a, a way of changing the cursor orientation. I believe what I have become used to, and in fact most games have, that I've played at least in the last... Anyway, long story short, when you press up, it should be moving toward the top left of the screen. So, essentially, when I press left, that should be the up arrow. When I press up, it should be the right, and when I press down, or sorry, right, it should be down, and when I press down, it should be left. That's that's the orientation that I'm used to. So cursor always moves toward the top left when you press up. But unfortunately, this is cursor moves toward the top right. Some games have that as, a, as an option, like I'm thinking Tactics 5, Obsidian Brigade had that as an option and then thankfully the developer was like oh you know what we can change that that's fine and he threw in a, a different orientation for me to be able to use like an, an inverted way so hopefully that's something that they add into this game because this will definitely cause me issues moving forward because I am used to doing things one way and unfortunately it is what it is okay I guess we're gonna do that I don't know how far this person can move I assume not that far all right, they seem to be stationary. They're gonna let us make our first moves, kind of. Oh, I don't wanna wait, all right. So, we're gonna do it slow and steady. Uh, the bird can fly, right? Oh God, this is gonna be rough. The bird did not fly at all. The bird just jumped into the water. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Either way, regardless of the, what I'll consider uh, a strange, I'm gonna delay my turn. A strange order for me. Um, I'm still excited. I still want to play. This doesn't like ruin the game by any stretch for me. All right, attack unit. Your units can attack enemy units that are within their attack range. Select the enemy unit within range to perform an attack action. Of course. Of course. Now he did manage to block me out though, which I was not really expecting. Attack the gremlin thief. Yeah, I'd love to. Is he gonna counterattack? He did not. And do I have some sort of way of attacking him? It looks like I do. So her attack was two range. That's interesting. Uh, Alright, get the weird bird creature over there. So let's see, attack range is three with this creature. The dog was clearly one and she was... She was, uh, two. All right, that's interesting. I can get behind that. I know it's a tutorial battle, but still. No, her ra Sorry, am I looking at the dog? What's happening right now? No, her range is two, okay. She doesn't have a lot of defense, though. I'm wondering if there's like special things that we can get on the map itself.
Yeah, we'll wait. All right. Let's go ahead and face you that way. Awesome. I didn't think that guy would actually move. I figured he would just sit there until we, like, rolled out on him, but apparently not. You know what? Why don't we, why don't we wait here? We'll call Chico back. Okay, round five. Chico, come back. I, I do hope that they add like an inverted option for the cursor movement or whatever. Oh, I, I, it hurts me a lot to try to do it this way. It's, it's a big struggle for me. Ah, uh, I have to like retrain my brain on how to, you know, I don't think I want you there. I want you here. I think I'm still outside your range. I should be able to attack. All right. Oh God. Eh. Just lobbed a ball of blue at him, I guess. I'm not sure what that is, but... Alright, we're gonna LB, we're gonna wait our turn. We've waddled into range-ish. On both fronts, we seem to be fine. Gonna move here, I'll just get a side attack, maybe. No, I don't wanna wait. Get over there, come on. Eh. I struggle so much when it's the wrong way for me. It's it's a real, real struggle for me. Like, real bad. Alright, so if I go here, I can attack at, like, one range, right? There it is. Ooh! Skull. Why are we all sparkly? What's that about? I wonder how much damage we'll do behind with this guy. Alright. Uh, probably not going to be enough. He's weak to it, and our dog should be able to go again. Man, we should be able to get through this flawlessly. If I'd stop canceling my uh, extra attack. Limit. There we go. Very good, very nice. I like it. It worked out. I apologize for the delays and such, guys and gals. But it's good. Ooh, I like that. So that's a nice looking victory screen. Very big in your face. 34% uh, experience, 29% experience, and 20. You have the MVP plus one experience. Uh, I guess experience, experience is gained off of how much damage you did. World map. From the world map, you can customize various features of your party, save your game. More options will become available as the story progresses. Time passes when you select a location with a story event or free battle. Okay. We got traits and we got party. Continue traveling to Rock Falls, apparently our only mission objective. Alright, these three are locked into our party right now. Um, our current party doesn't look like we can take anybody out of. Okay, and this kind of tells us a little bit about each character. Peony's got 30 HP, Chico's got 50, is it 55, and Hayachin's got 18. Hayachin, water, attacks, deal critical damage to fire units. Assist, cleanse, heals HP, and oh, that's cool. So we can attack our own units to actually heal and stuff. That's neat. Aquatic can swim through water. It increases our attack by 100%, our defense by 25%, and 20% HP regen while in water. Uh, arc attacks have greater vertical reach but less accuracy, 100% damage to aerial targets, increase item drop chance if target is killed, and lucky day, this unit gains various stat boosts on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Uh, Piachin, age 8 months. Peony found Piachin's egg on the body of what she could only assume was... Piachin's deceased mother. When the egg hatched, Peony named her after a P.O. P.O. woman that lived in her village on Mount Alma. Alright, that's cool. What do we got for Chico here? Chico, just pretty basic up top. I think a bit more movement than the other two. Yeah, four movement versus three. Normal movement type. Physical attacks have no unique traits. Uh, assist, inspire, enchant, grants plus 20 defense and 15 evade. I don't know how you do that, but that's there. Melee performs combo attacks when adjacent to an enemy. 
10 defense and 10 accuracy. Devouring. Recover some HP upon defeating an enemy. Okay. Plus attack if an ally is defeated. Uh, it's a doggo named Chico. Uh, age 6, Peony. Found Chico abandoned in the forest around the foot of Mount Alma. Good boy that loves to chase. What is that? Unilanas? Unilanas. I have no idea what that is. It's cool. And finally, Peony herself. Arcane, after two attacks, next attack will deal critical damage. Assist, Cloak Enchant. Units can't be targeted. A unit can't be targeted and increases back attack damage. Cloak is lost when attacking or being damaged. Interesting. Normal movement type, ranged. Fires projectiles directly toward the target. Steel takes enchantment from target on kill if no enchantment is already in place. Plus attack for each kill. Very nice. Spirit of the Falcon, wind slash fire summoned Fey have increased base move. Okay. And she is 15 years old. Her name is Peony uh, Bernard, a young witch from Mount Alma in the north, adept with all manner of machines and gadgets due to teachings from her mother. And there are also traits. Traits and equipment. Leader units can gain trait points that they as they level up. Equip Unique equipment for each character can also be changed from the screen when it is obtained. I can read sometimes. Oh, we got one trait point. Okay. Oh, and I can I can split it between any of the characters, huh? Back attack and attack percentage, critical damage and attack percentage, and defense breaker and attack percentage. Well, I think we're going to go with the main character and we're going to go a bit offensive with her for now. Did I save that? Did that work? It did work. Okay. And then we can switch between the traits and the party from there. Alright, that's cool. Alright, well, let's get a little bit further in. Let's see what the uh, Dusty Road has for us. Tip 1. Melee units have the unique ability to perform combo attacks if they are adjacent to an enemy that is currently being attacked by an ally. Ah, that makes sense. Interesting. Witches? They've barricaded the road! Chico, you take the lead. We'll have to attack together to break through. Uh, Arf? Defeat all enemies. It's a really cool start. Uh, I like it a lot. Alright, only melee attackers can perform combos. Place Chico next to enemy units to get him in a position to make combo attacks. Use the other units to attack near Chico to start a combo. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I'm all over it. I think I know exactly what they want. Oh, look, they're even showing me exactly what they want. Do I want to attack to start with? I feel like I do, right? I'll attack the Gremlin Witch. All right, I'm gonna move here and I'm going to attack. Yeah, get that combo going. What? And then we have our, our little buddy here. Uh, oh, if I move here, and then I attack. I'm gonna have bonus damage, right? 39 anti-air. We're just gonna destroy this person straight up. Bloop, gown. Flying on your brooms? What you thinking? They're like, hmm, blocking this road did not really work. On your turn, you can hold right trigger on a unit to check its range. Oh, that's neat. I mean, I guess. Wait, normal movement type? Wait, I can't change. Oh, this is just extra info? All right, I gotcha. We're just going to be moving a little bit closer. I don't think we're, we're in position yet. I think they'll probably hide behind their barricades. Just going to move there and wait. Move here and wait. So. Unit can't be targeted and increases back attack damage. Cloak is lost when attacking and being damaged. Can I can I cloak myself? No. 
I'm just gonna kill this one straight up. Like, there's no reason not to, right? 45 anti-air. Get wrecked. Now it's up to the heart. Ooh, she hit us, but we had a shield, apparently, or something. Which is different and strange, and I like it. Alright, doggo. Get him. Yeah. How dare you attack my mib. Business handled. See, this is how we do stuff. We take care of business, things happen. Big old victory level up screen. Well, what do you assume level up screen, right? Uh, MVP up on uh, our little creature. 59, 59, and 69% for experience. Is that how close or how far into the level they are, I guess? I suppose that kind of makes sense. So we got a total of uh, three bonus experience, plus we got plus one to battle experience. Alright, that's cool. There's something new going on here. Uh, do we get another trait point or something? Or Oh, they oh they each had... Oh, we each get one. Okay. Okay, well, we're going to go all offensive all the time. We done. Alright, we'll go into one more map and then we'll probably break it all off. Critical hit chance is determined by elements, water crits against fire, fire against earth and ice, earth against wind and electric, wind against water, ice crits against water and earth, electric crits against water and arcane. Arcane after two attacks, uh, next attack will deal critical damage. Okay. Alright, what are we up against? Gah, a band of salamanders is bad enough. But that mana totem is also protecting them. Hmm. Salamanders are fire elemental fey, so their counter elemental is water. Yeah? Piachin, we're gonna have to rely on you to take them out. Chico and I will keep you covered while you use your water attack from long range. Pew! I mean, sure. Makes sense. Uh, unit info is displayed in the upper right part of the screen. Press Y to get more detailed information. I already went through all this stuff. I am on point, yo. I could have probably put a cloak on this one. Can I hit from here? I cannot. Okay, that's fine. I didn't... Oh, God, that... That was tremendous. That hurt so much more than I was expecting. Oh boy, howdy. And we're gonna eat it. Just a little bit there. Is that increasing their attack? What is that doing? During battle you can hold to bring up quick eye. Quick eye displays information on elemental strengths, weaknesses, battle mechanics. Alright, yeah, I'm all over. Alright, so that went terribly bad. Um, do I want to attack this thing? Am I even going to do any damage? I do damage. Except it had elemental guard. That's not great. Alright, I'm going to try it again. Elemental Guard once more. And we did get the extra attack. We destroyed that thing. Which is good, but... Uh, it's not great. Alright, so what we need to do now is we need to get over here. And we need to drop it on. Which we will absolutely do. And it will definitely destroy his soul. Which is great. Uh, I'm thinking hindsight being what it is, I should, we're gonna have the dog die and we're gonna have to probably start this over. Yep, dog goes down. But I don't think the dog goes down down. When the leader unit's HP reaches zero, they enter a wounded state. If a wounded unit is attacked repeatedly, they will be defeated. A wounded unit will recover th if three rounds pass or if an ally unit assists them. 
Oh, interesting. Interesting uh, way of doing things, I would have to say. I think I'm just going to obliterate a few folks. Like, it doesn't really matter if they attack me at this point, because I can just, like, destroy their souls, I think. So if I were to do this whole battle over again, I would do things significantly differently. But we'll see. Level up. When a unit performs any action in combat, it gains experience. When enough experience is gathered, the unit will level. Makes sense. Weak, okay. I like that. We're going to assist Doggo. Welcome back, Doggo. Who's a good boy? Chico's a good boy. Yeah, he is. Chico can't do a whole lot, unfortunately. So if I heal you for seven... Is that... Is it worth doing that? Or should I be doing, like, just killing the creature? I think I should just kill the creature. Seems like the safer play. So Chico didn't get to do a tremendous amount, but we did burn through that one thing. Alright, so hindsight being what it is, I could have done stuff significantly differently and it would have worked out much better there, but that's okay. I've learned a fair few bits there. So, we have all gained another trait. I'm going to go ahead and dump that in there for all of them. Now my question is, we've leveled up, what does that give us? Do we get higher stats? Chico gained one experience, uh, sorry, one HP point. Looks like his attack went up a little too. I thought his attack was at 19, now it's at 21. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what we gained for leveling up, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, folks, and with that, I think we're going to call a close to this very first episode. We accomplished it a fair bit. We're still kind of in the tutorialized area. We're still kind of getting spoon-fed and handheld a bit here and there, but it's all good. You know, we need to learn how the game works, learn the ins and the outs, the advantages and disadvantages, and I'm here for it. I, I'm excited. I can't wait to play more. Hopefully you guys are excited as well. If you want more information about the game, where to get the game, information on the developer or the publisher, or any of that wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video and various links and things of that nature, just like it always is. And if you happen to enjoy, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share, do all the YouTube stuff. You guys know what you're doing. I do hope that the developers will consider adding the alternate movement thing, the top left cursor versus the top right. So basically just shift the movement one position and everything will be great. I'll be super happy. And I can only assume a lot of other folks will be as well because if you've played any of the recent... If you played like the remake of Final Fantasy on the PSP, if you've played any of the Disgaea games or any tactical turn-based strategy games lately, short of like one or two, they all have the other method of moving. So I really hope and I plead and beg that that's something that they can add that's not overly complicated and not super hard for them to do. And it is something that they'll consider. But we'll see. We'll see. Either way, folks, really like the game. I had a blast with it. Until the very next episode, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. I have been your host for this. Thank you guys so much for stopping by the Freak Show. And always remember, we play, we fight, we conquer.